So I've been working on three different projects. And the first one is the communication module inside admin panel. And this module is used to send push notifications to all the users of a specific pod. And for example, if, if there is any kind of emergency in the zone, so we can notify all the users so that they can take a certain action beforehand. And uh, if there is any announcement, admins can use this module to send any to send the announcement to the users using a push notification. So here I can add the title uh, and a message. can also attach an image and here is the preview of the image and uh, I can attach a certain kind of action to the notification for example if the user clicks the notification it should open a website or a web page where it provides more details about the notification for example if there is now is uh, if Ocean Builder wants to make an announcement or if there is a new feature release or anything that uh, users that, uh, that we want to notify the users about so we can notify them with the notification and when they when they click the notification it will open the browser and uh, and it will display us uh, our page with more details and here I can select the board which will uh, which will receive the notification and here I can also save the notification if, for example, admin is not sure about the text of the notification. You can save it and it will be saved as a draft. So this image will be stored in AWS S3. And when it comes back, and there are two options, which is to like create, which is like deleting a draft and autofill. And if I click autofill, it will. Um, restore the content of the notification and if I publish it, publish it from here it will be delivered to the users of this pod only <coughs> so notification has been published so for for now we have uh, we have uh, worked on notifications for Android although I I had worked on the notification for iOS as well, but I'm facing some issues with iOS and I will fix it in one or two days. So here is the how the notification looks like. I don't have Android phone, so I asked Asad to record the video for how the notification will look like in real. So he is using an emulator. and. Here is the text of the notification and uh, when it clicks the notification it will open the Ocean Builder website because I have attached uh, the action URL. So here, here is how it will work. So this was about the notifications and the second thing that I worked on is the single sign on. So basically, it is about. Uh, basically, we want to. Uh, we want to. We want the users to have a single uh, username or email with a password, which they can use to log into all of the Ocean Builder services. But the problem is that Home Assistant has its own authentication system, and they store their users inside uh, their own database, which is in Raspberry Pi. So we had to replace their authentication system because we don't want users to have a different username and password for home assistant and a different username and password for ocean builder so we want to merge that so here you can see that we have two options for sign in first option is to use home assistant's own uh, authentication system so here if i log in with my credentials uh, yes 
So for now, I can log in with uh, with the home system's credentials and with Ocean Builder's credentials as well. Uh, let me log out from here. And now I, I will try to log in with uh, the Ocean Builder's uh, user credentials. So now this uh, basically in the backend it is linked to our own database and it will verify the password from there. I'll try to log in with my email. Uh, I think I provided the wrong password. Okay, so I'm logged in now with my uh, with our own authentication system, which is based on Cognito. So that was a tedious task for me because I had to go through the uh, the code of Home Assistant and tweak a lot of things from there and build our own kind of authentication system. Uh, but still, there there is a lot of work which needs to be done because when you log in. Uh, it sends some kind of uh, uh, authentication tokens and home system has its own authentication tokens and I, I have to make sure that they don't mix up and uh, they don't break the things inside the home system so I'm still working on this and uh, I'm not sure how long it will take but I'll try to uh, 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 I'll, try, I'll try to make it uh, work as fast as I can. So that was about the single sign on and uh, our own authentication system inside uh, Home Assistant. And the third thing that I'm basically working on is the drone tracking application. Uh, here I'm working on the backend for now, and it's a, th this application is in initial stages. Basically, uh, the pr purpose of this drone tracking application is that users will be able to track the delivery of the drone, track the location of the drone in real time. So, and it will also show them, the application will also show them the estimated time of arrival. Uh, so, I'm still working on, I'm basically working on the backend and uh, we will come up with a design of the application and then we will, I will work on the front end. So, basically, uh, for now we have the target of the 31st July so I'll try to uh, uh, finish this project before the deadline. Uh, I'm working on the API. I will, I will provide this API to Omar and Omar will integrate it uh, with, uh, uh, with, the, with the drone if drones API and it will uh, send some essential, essential parameters like uh, the longitude, latitude, uh, the altitude and some more parameters which are uh, crucial for calculating the estimated time of arrival of the drone. So that's it from my side.